Hikiru, or directly translated as To Live, is considered to be one of Hikiru Kurosawa's best films. Even Kurosawa himself claims this to be his best work. It's a pretty tall order. <laughs> This is one of those films I've been putting off for a long time due to what its story is about, and uh, yeah, it's pretty great. The film is about Kanji Watanabe, played by Takashi Shimura, an elderly bureaucrat that finds out he's in late-stage stomach cancer. With given the little amount of time he has left to live, he tries to find purpose in a life he felt he has wasted. The film opens almost documentary-like, explaining to the audience what is happening before the character themselves know it, and honestly, this felt really weird and out of place for the rest of the film. However, this might be one of the most in-depth character studies I've ever seen, with Takashi Shimura giving what I would consider to be one of the greatest performances of all time. The way Shimura gives off subtle expressions, you can clearly see what's going through this man's head with no dialogue. You can feel his pain and you can bear it with him as he struggles to find something in his waning stretch of life. Every interaction with characters on screen, you can clearly see how Shimura's character feels, thinks, and reacts to what's happening. It's a brilliant performance and one of my favorite parts of the film. This is without a doubt a character study that presents a lot of heavy themes and philosophy. Watanabe is a character that spent his whole life in the bureaucratic system and really has nothing to show for it. There's a message about not letting work become your life, that a routine of the same thing can be deadly to your soul. There's another character that Watanabe worked with who's quitting, and she flat out says that if she continued working there that it would kill her. How that system is like a cancer to you. Watanabe did everything because he had to raise his son as an only dad, but when Watanabe goes to tell his son about his cancer, he overhears his son and daughter-in-law talk about getting his inheritance and how they can finally buy a house of their own, sending a message that Watanabe was so caught up in the work that he never really formed a bond with his son, even though he dedicated himself to his job for his son. He goes out with people he doesn't really know because he doesn't have any friends, and this loneliness is brought front and center when he constantly wants to spend time with the woman he used to work with who is much younger than him. She's basically the first friend he's had in who knows how long. The film presents the idea that despite how much time you have left in this world, you should spend it finding happiness, finding something that makes you you. Not to get caught up into the system that's unfortunately a big part of our lives. While Tanabe decides to use the last bit of his life to do some good, 30 years as a bureaucrat and he has nothing to show for it, but when a village is complaining about a cesspool they want turned into a park for the kids to have a safe space, he uses this to finally do something with his 30 year career and the last stretch of his life. Honestly, this is such a fascinating story on confronting morality. To me, the film starts off as almost a horror film. I'm somewhat of a hypochondriac and I'm not gonna lie, but the pain and suffering caused by cancer is something that is genuinely terrifying to me, and a lot of other people too. The prospect of facing your mortality and having a timer ticking down is psychological turmoil that really gets to me. But where the film starts off this way, it almost goes through the seven stages of grief to where the end of the film is almost cheerful in a way. The first half of the film being the diagnosis and coming to terms with that. I'm not sure if this is really a spoiler, but I'm throwing out a spoiler warning for this small section. I'm not going to really spoil too much, but I need to talk about it as it's a big positive for me with the story structure. The last half of the film actually being cut between Watanabe's funeral and the last few days of his life, with the people around him piecing together the clues because they didn't know he was sick. Personally, I was getting to the point where the first part of the film felt like, alright, it should be coming to an end. It was starting to drag on a bit and felt like it had presented his themes and messages to their extent. Then abruptly we cut to Watanabe's funeral and from there the structure completely changes, becoming somewhat non-linear that really helped the pacing of the film, but also felt like it brought its themes around full circle to further the impact of the message. The film has some beautiful cinematography despite some of the scenes looking damaged. The Criterion release looks good but you can tell some of the original elements are probably damaged but there's some amazing framing and blocking. You could just pluck frames out of this film and easily hang them up on your wall. There's little music to the film that feels more fitting for the tone, especially considering the fact that Watanabe sings a couple of songs himself throughout the film that really added to the impact when he does sing them. There's really not much negative to say about this film, other than just maybe how dense of a film it is and how heavy the material here is. It's one of those films that it takes a long time for it to sink in, but can also be rewarding on multiple viewings. If you're looking for a non-Samurai Korozawa film, this is one I would super recommend and I'm giving it a 9 out of 10.